Hello everyone. In this short video, I want to talk about the SPLine command in uh, SOLIDWORKS. So when you click on SPLine, you know SPLine is a um, continuous curve and smooth that passes through a bunch of control points that you specify. And it is C2 continuous, which means not only the curve is continuous, right? Uh, the derivatives are the same at the uh, intersection points or control points, and the second derivatives are the same. So we say it's a uh, continuous up to second derivative. So you know when we click on SP line, and uh, we basically define a bunch of points, control points, and then at the end we double click or use escape. So first thing is, um, if you want to fully define the SP line, you have to watch, you have to specify the X and Y of each and every one of these control points. So if you grab the um, dimension uh, tool, right, and go ahead and provide all these values as I'll do right now here. So if I specify these X and Y offsets for these four control points, you see the SP line is what fully defined. So that's the way to go about fully defining the SP line. And uh, of course, now we cannot change anything because everything is fully defined. But there are more controls to SP lines, and that's what I want to talk about today. So let me get rid of these uh, dimensions so I can control the SP line and tell you about it. So you know that uh, SP lines basically. Uh, if you in SP lines, if you grab a control point and move it. Uh, it is going to basically change the curve globally, okay? And uh, if you want to limit this amount of change in the overall curve, one of the things you can do is what? To add more control points. The more control points you have around the specific control point, it's like basically nailing down the SP line to the background at those control points so if you move that specific control points, uh, those other ones around it, they won't let this uh, variation to affect uh, way far away from the uh, control point. Let me tell you what I mean. So you see here, I move it and you see clearly uh, the entire SP line changes big time. Now, if I right click here and say what, insert SP line point, and I insert maybe one here, one here, one here, maybe one here, right? Look. So now I have added two points to the right, two points to the left of this guy. Now look, if I grab this and move it, although still globally it changes, but it's not as significant as what? As last time. Around it, it's big, but away from it, it's not as much. So you can always add more control points. Or you can delete control points, right? You can click on any of these control points and simply what? Use the delete from the keyboard. You can also move these control points like this and you can redefine the uh, position of the control points. But is that all you can do? No, there is more that you can, more than this. One of the things you can do is by controlling the tangent to the SP line at every point and changing the angle of the tangent line. So what you need to do for that is you right click here and say what? You say add tangency control. So now you get these lines, as you can see, you get those lines. And guess what? You can grab any of these lines and you can change their angles, right? You can see that angle also down here in this window. So you see the angle of tangent is like you can make it exactly 80 degrees or you can grab this guy, right? And for example, this one, you can, for example, make it exactly zero degrees and so on. So you can grab these control points and what? You can control their uh, tangent line. As I said, let's say this guy, you can make it, let's say 10 degrees. And then finally this last one, let's go ahead and make this guy like uh, 25 degrees or something. Okay, so you can control the SP line by what? By tangent lines the other thing you can do is curvature control the second derivative so if you want you can do curvature control here and what you do with curvature control is you see here when you add this symbol for curvature control look if i grab it you see what you're doing right when i increase this i'm increasing the radius of curvature over there and making it more flat 
Well, if I reduce it, I'm making basically that point what? A sharp uh, turn, and I'm reducing the radius of curvature, correct? And uh, if you go down here, right, you can see this is what? This is the radius of curvature, this number that you can see. And you see, I can change that, right? Or this bottom one here, that's the curvature, which is basically the reciprocal of radius of curvature. So if you want, you can control the curvature at any point as well as what? Changing the slope of the tangent line. You can also show what we call the control polygon. So you can right click here and say what? Say, hey, uh, show me the uh, display the control polygon. And here it shows you these control polygons, which are basically these lines are like those tangent lines. Okay. And it's more than that, really, but I don't want to discuss it in this video. What is a control polygon? But the good thing is now you can grab these lines or these endpoints and you can also what? You can also control the polygon through these lines as well and through these endpoints. So this is what this is the uh, control polygon and you can control it through these uh, dash lines, basically. OK, if you want, you can turn that off, right? And one other thing that might be desirable or useful is to see the uh, curvature or the radius of curvature at different points because maybe you're limited to a minimum value or to a maximum value. So you don't want the radii of the curvatures to be less than some number or more than some number. So you can right click here and say what? Display me the minimum uh, radius of curvature. You see the minimum radius happens here at 0.34. And so uh, maybe you don't want anything below 0.3. So this would tell you, yes, your design is good because your minimum is 0.34. Okay, so this is very important. Or let's say if this is a path of some particle moving, you know uh, this radius of curvature uh, is going to affect the centripetal acceleration. When this is a smaller, the centripetal acceleration is bigger. So if you want to limit the amount of centripetal acceleration, you want to limit the minimum of this value. Okay, if the velocity of the traversal is a fixed number. So that's one of the controls that you have, and that's a very good thing. You might also want to see inflection points, the points where the curvature changes, the sign of the curvature. It goes from here negative to here positive. So you see there is a con inflection point here, and there is one inflection point here. Okay, so if you want, you can see them as well. Uh, let me turn them off for a moment. Uh, one of the uh, other things that might be useful is basically this guy here, simplify SP line. So this is where your SP line has way too many points and maybe you really don't need all of those control points. So by the simplification, you're allowed to what? You're allowed to basically um, simplify that. So for that matter, let's go ahead and add some control points here that might not necessarily be useful so i'm gonna add a bunch of more control points all over the sp line and then i try to simplify it see what it can give me okay so you see i change it from four to now a lot more points i just counted this like 13 so now i right click here and say simplify sp line and here uh, it gives you a tolerance and this tolerance is the deviation the amount of tolerance for deviation of uh, the new sp line from the original one so the bigger it is it can the more uh, control points it can get rid of so right now it's zero but if i make it like 0 0.05 or something right um, then you can see or i can click on this smooth so it suggests a number to me it says, hey, if you use 0.05, I can go from 13 to 10, and it shows you the new uh, version of the SP line in yellow. You see, it's very similar to the original one. So if I say, okay, it asks you, hey, do you want me to get rid of some relations? You say, yes, and there we go. Now you're down to 10 with some small deviations. Or again, you can repeat that, right? Say, if you can give me more, again, click on this. It says, hey, yeah, I can uh, go to 9, Mm, uh, maybe you can bump this up yourself and uh, make it from 0 0.06 here to 0.12. Still, this is reasonable. You go from 10 to what? To 7. There we go. Okay, so you can always simplify 
the SP lines as long as the variations are acceptable, right? And uh, because the less control points you have in general, easier to define it, make it fully defined, easier to manufacture it, and so on and so forth, okay? So uh, adding more and more control points is not necessarily a good thing. So uh, here I showed you some of the options for SP lines. There is another thing which is converting to style SP line and going back from a style to generic one. And I will talk about that in a separate video. I want to talk about the style SP lines, okay, Bezier curve and BSP lines in a separate uh, video and not make this video too long. So I'll stop it right here and I'll talk about it in the next lecture. So thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.